It is perhaps one of the most important freedoms we value in this country and in our hyper-partisan society. People take to social media to deliver messages and use freedom of speech to freely air their frustrations, prove their points, whether factual or not, and belittle those who disagree with their political thinking. On one hand, it's a fascinating part of our social evolution. Others might argue it's created a devolution in this country. Either way, the reality is social media is one of the most common ways we communicate. So when platforms like Facebook, Twitter, and other social media giants started banning users, including former President Trump, and banning posts that they deemed dangerous to the greater public, an uproar of protests ensued, claiming freedom of speech was being infringed upon. Last Friday, on the floor of the U.S. Senate, longtime Republican Senator Chuck Grassley delivered an incredibly thought-provoking speech on this very issue. I'm thrilled to be able to bring Senator Chuck Grassley on with us today to go in depth on his comments and dive more into this issue. Senator, thank you so much for giving me some time today to talk about this. Well, I appreciate it. Freedom of speech is so important and it, it isn't freedom of speech just for something you agree with. It's freedom of speech for people you might disagree with. That for sure is a great point. When it comes to freedom of speech, freedom of expression, people sometimes misinterpret this uh, uh, freedom that we have. So let's start by defining what you say it is. Well, it, it includes a lot of things other than just political speech, but it was put in the Constitution because uh, after the Revolutionary War, people remembered that a lot of people could be jailed for speaking against King George III. We wanted to make sure that you could criticize your government without being put in jail. Uh, it's been expanded a little bit by the Supreme Court in recent years uh, to include uh, uh, what you might call economic speech, uh, business speech, corporate speech, uh, covering some of those things as well. It's gone so far as to say that uh, in, in regard to uh, spending for elections, that uh, spending money on a campaign is an extension of freedom of speech, and there can't, put, uh, there can't be con uh, any limits put on what you spend money on. There can be limits on what people can contribute to you, but not how you express that uh, through the expenditure of money. And I suppose a lot of other areas, uh, there's only one that I always quote where freedom of speech is not covered, and it goes back uh, probably a hundred years to some Supreme Court decision that said you can't yell fire uh, in a theater and then have a stampede and people get killed. So there are some limits, but there should be uh, no limit. And particularly, I think about college campuses. What is a university for? It's an exchange of ideas. And some universities are putting some limits on who can speak or not speak. Some people are putting limits on where you can speak certain things on a campus or not. Uh, and uh, I always say a definition of a university is uh, where uh, controversy runs rampant. Uh, we should be able to sit down and uh, uh, exchange ideas and we learn from each other's ideas. But when universities start putting some limits on what can be said at a uh, university, it seems to me completely contrary uh, to uh, what, uh, what uh, the purpose of a university, a purpose of education. And uh, that's, that's one of the things that irritates me the most is that we can't have any discussion, certain discussions you can't have on university campuses people often confuse, the right protects Americans from government censorship, not the censorship of private entities. And so when these social media uh, companies are suspending the accounts, removing posts, banning users, we hear that their rights are being infringed upon, but that's not really what this boils down to. This comes down to big tech companies and regulating this system. Yeah, you know, censorship ought to the last thing you have in political discussion. And it may go beyond political discussion, but for instance, uh, you, shouldn't, you, you should have uh, all points of political view presented and just assume that the American people are s smart enough to sort it out. 
But, but then, then we, we have, have the, the issue of people who are in a higher authority and the accusations that they are telling falsehoods or flat out lying uh, about some of the things that we saw like in this past election when people were accusing President Trump of lying but his supporters don't believe that he was lying. So that's where this debate really has grown into what it is today. A double standard. There's one standard for conservatives and one standard for uh, Democrats. And you can remember uh, when Obama was president and the Obamacare was put out. You were told that you, uh, your insurance premiums were going to go down $2,500. You're going to be able to keep your doctor. You were going to be able to uh, uh, keep your insurance. And uh, for a lot of people, millions of people, that didn't turn out to be true. But uh, President Obama was never accused of lying. Uh, like so often Trump was. Some would say that a free press means that editors, reporters have the right to decide what they think is news or appropriate opinion to share in their publication or like here on a broadcast outlet. Now the New York Times did print Senator Cotton's op-ed piece and a debate followed. Was that free press in action as people then debated the issue? Well, I think you, you have to realize that a newspaper can put in what they want to put in, but a beacon of, uh, of absolute news and, and the great tradition of the New York Times, it seems to me they're acting contrary to that tradition and the respect that they're supposed to have, and they lose respect of what they did to Senator Cotton. But look at what happens even within the newspaper itself. Uh, there's uh, employees re, uh, re, uh, uh, reject the editor for doing that. The, the editor then resigns. Uh, who's, who's running the newspaper, the editor or the uh, journalist? And it, in this case, it looks like the, the employees, uh, news employees were the ones running the newspaper. So many people would say that uh President Trump was using dangerous speech, therefore he was banned. These are private companies who took him off social media. What do you say about that? Well, uh, really doesn't answer your question, but let me say this and then you can come back if you want to. Uh, I, I've, until recently, I always thought we just need to leave these platforms alone. They serve a good purpose. Uh, more people can express ideas in a very cheap way uh, that didn't otherwise have an opportunity to get their views out. But the way they censor, it's led me to cooperate with the people in this Congress. It tends to be a bipartisan uh, effort that we're going to put some curbs on what Facebook, Twitter, and Google, uh, et cetera, c can do or not do in that area. Particularly, we're going to look at their freedom from any lawsuit for anything they do. Uh, curbing that uh, freedom that they have now. Senator Chuck Grassley, I so appreciate your time. You're a very busy man. Thank you, sir.